Welcome back to Western New York, where Pickles the Cat is enjoying the sun. And I am enjoying the sun too, in the woods and all around. Greetings, wild riders. Last week when we met, I talked with you from the side of our vernal pool. I wanted you to be able to have a view of it in the context of its woods. You can see that's where I'll be sitting in a moment. But so this is a big woods. And the vernal pool for spring pool will be here for just a little while. We will return to our vernal pool sit spot each week. Sometimes I will write with you here and sometimes I will write here with different grades. All of us will notice changes in this vernal pool, this system, over time. If you have not chosen a sit spot for yourself, you might think about doing so. And now, let's think together about writing. Hello, kindergarten and first grade writers of Mamaroneck. Welcome back. I'm so glad to see you. And today we are thinking about nature journaling. When you watched the slideshow from Sheldrake all about how to keep a nature journal, one thing you learned and that I thought about was how everybody's nature journal should be just right for them. And so I was writing in my nature journal right here by the side of the vernal pool. I wanted to share with you what I did and give you some thoughts of things that you could try in your nature journal this week. So what I did is I just stayed right where I am and looked close to me and saw what little plants could I see. And then I sketched them as closely as I could. I did not do fast sketches where I took my pen and just did super fast. Instead, I looked with my eyes and then I drew a little tiny bit. And then I looked with my eyes a little more and I drew a little tiny bit more. And I was very slow and I only wrote with my black pen this time. I will come back in and layer in some color. So I did make a couple of notes about colors for me to think about. Let me show you my page of drawing and then I will show you what I did with writing today because I think it's something you might enjoy trying not just once but more than once because in a nature journal what we do is we develop habits that we can try again and again. So today right beside me I will show you what I drew. I'll read to you and then I'll hold it up for a minute so you can look. I did write the date which is April 14th today. I wrote where I am, home by the vernal pool. It is 1 o'clock p.m., 108 exactly. And I did write the weather. It's windy and it's cold. It's not terribly cold, but cold enough for me to wear this fuzzy. So I described, I drew some leaves and I told some have jagged edges, have red tips. I drew a dead leaf that was brown, some reddish stems. I described some leaves that I thought looked ruffly. Buds are red. And then you'll see, I drew some bits of moss. And you'll see a little picture of a frame. It looks like a picture frame. And I drew a very simple ear because I wanted to write what I can hear. And I wrote, I hear trees creaking, birds, cars. And right now I also hear wind. So let me hold this up so you can look. Notice that I didn't make all my leaves look exactly like each other because what I was doing is looking at those leaves, the leaves that I could see. And I tried to trace the edges of the leaves with my eyes and then with my pen. I did not lay the leaves down on my paper and then trace them. I just looked at them and traced them with my eyes and with my pen. You can see on the dead leaf, there's a couple holes. You can see the jagged edges. You can see the frame where I wrote what I can hear. And I felt so calm and joyful doing this. It made me appreciate this teeny spot of ground that I've never known so well. But I didn't stop there. After that, I decided to write on the page right next door. And I did this with a couple of phrases in mind, thinking about a book that I have called The Private Eye by Carrie Roof. And also another book I was reading by John Muir Laws. Both of them talk about writing about, with words, not only pictures, what we notice and what we wonder. So notice and wonder. And so I thought I will think about 
what I drew, and then I'll write words describing what I notice in this space and what I wonder. Again, I'll read it to you and then I'll hold it up so you can look. I notice that in one small space, I can see many kinds of green. Some moss feels dry, some moss feels wet and spongy. The mud is dark brown because it rained yesterday. I always think of spring leaves as green, but today I see some dark red on the edges and veins of leaves. The wild rose has all red buds. I wonder why. I notice the old leaves from last year are crumbly and full of holes. I wonder how exactly leaves break down into soil. Everything in nature goes around and around. The peepers are loud. So I, as I was writing this, I heard something else. I heard the peepers in the pond across the way at our neighbor's house. So I drew what I saw as close to what it really looks like. This doesn't mean I need to be a fine artist. It just means I need to be a slow and careful observer. And then I took these observations and thought a little bit and wrote about what I notice and what I wonder. So this week, you may choose to go to your same sit spot as I'm doing this week, or you might go somewhere different. You might say, I think I'll try a new spot in my yard, or perhaps I'll try a spot at Sheldrake, but I'll go somewhere outside quietly with a pen or a pencil, whatever you like to write with. I'll write the date, time, maybe the weather, where I am. Draw carefully what I see and then write what I notice and what I wonder. And I will do this more than once this week. The things we talk about are not writing and drawing and journaling exercises that scientists and writers and artists just do once in their life and then are finished. These are habits we develop. They're ways of writing in a notebook and ways of seeing our world and ways of being close to nature too. So it was wonderful to see you. I'll see you in a couple of days and I'll show you what more work I've done on these pages and on some others. Take care. When you draw and write in your nature journal, think about these phrases. I notice. I wonder. See what new ideas come into your mind. And remember, you can write in your nature journal anytime you wish. Nature is a good friend, and keeping a nature journal is a way of getting to know this friend. Here you can see the page from my nature journal. I drew very slowly and carefully, tracing the edges of each plant, and then I wrote words nearby. After I drew, I wrote, I notice, and told what I noticed. And then I wrote, I wonder, and wondered on the page. See the spring sunlight catching these rocks and leaves? Daffodils are blooming all over the place. And yes, in western New York, we still have snow in spring. This week, think about how your nature journal might become a part of your life. What will you notice? What will you wonder? Will you find a sit spot? Our natural world is full of gifts, my Mamaronic friends. There are many reasons to write wild.